Welcome to The Astrology Show with your host, Kelly Fox. Each week, Kelly will give you access to the current transits that are a valuable tool which provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has through our sun sign. Understanding the current planetary influences each week can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. Sometimes events in your life may seem completely random, but there is a pattern to the order of these events, one set in motion in part by you and in part by the planets and stars in the sky and their influence on your life here on Earth. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, if you're going to get that promotion, move to a new city, or fall in love, tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. It can help you anticipate problems before they occur, give you tools to cope with changes, and help you look forward to the wonderful days ahead. Kelly Fox is a professional astrologer and internet pioneer who launched Astrology.com, one of the first and most successful astrology websites. Today, her passion lies with her new site, TheAstrologer.com, where she brings a modern-day approach to an ancient wisdom. Please join Kelly each week to learn more about how the planets can align for you. Hi there and welcome to The Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox. How are you enjoying Jupiter in Scorpio? That is the big news. That's the big news of today, this week, last week, this month. Jupiter in Scorpio. Uh, we have a lot of other stuff going on. Stuff going on is probably not the right terminology. We have a lot of planetary influences affecting us at the moment. A lot of changes. Uh, just looking here at my calendar, but of course the big news is Jupiter uh, moved into Scorpio where it will be until November 2018. So I'm going to cover that in the show. I'm also going to cover Love Planet Venus in Libra. Uh, Libra is one of Venus's favorite signs. Uh, the other favorite sign is Taurus. Uh, and also what's going on is we have a new moon in Libra on Thursday. And then next week, but I will save next week until next week, uh, but next week the sun will be moving into Scorpio, so I will be dedicating next week's show to all you Scorpios. And also uh, Warrior Planet Mars next week will be moving into Libra. So we have a lot of Libran energy at this time because the sun is in Libra. Uh, we also have, let me look at my handy dandy calendar, and I've just ordered next year's calendar, so I can't wait for that. Oh, and just by the way, just a plug for this calendar, which I've been using for 20 plus years, and always, always look forward to the next year's calendar, the Jim Maynard's calendar by Quicksilver. Uh, love this calendar. There are other astrological calendars out there, but this is my very favorite. Always reliable information within it. And of course, the other, the, other, uh, the other source of information that I use is my ephemeris. And ephemeris is the, uh, gives you the astrological, gives you the planetary positions for any given time. And the current ephem ephemeris is a 50-year ephemeris from 2000 to 2050. So within these calendars that I'm always referring to, um, this Quicksilver calendar is uh, a monthly ephemeris. But here's the other thing. You can get an ephemeris on my website, uh, theastrologer.com, uh, if you go to uh, slash today. Uh, and then you will see that there is a link to each month's ephemeris. So if I'm out and about and I don't have my trusted calendar, I will go to my website and I will pull up this month's uh, planetary positions. So uh, the other thing that's going on as well I'm going to talk about in uh, this show is communication planet Mercury moving into Scorpio. Uh, so that is very good for uh, research and investigation. 
so back to the headline of the show, and that is Jupiter in Scorpio. So Jupiter moved into Scorpio last Tuesday the 10th, and it will be there until November 18th. And Jupiter is typically in one sign for one year. The cycle of Jupiter is 12 years because there are 12 signs, one sign per year. Now, Jupiter is referred to as the planet of luck because it brings opportunities and advantages. And, of course, uh, opportunities and advantages can look like a stroke of luck to the untrained eye. But really, it's being sometimes in the right place at the right time. Um, but to be in the right place at the right time, you have to sort of, you would have worked towards that. So Jupiter can bring opportunities in certain areas. And this previous 12 months that we've just had. So for the past year, Jupiter has been in Libra. And so the focus has been about relationships. And so what that means is it's not just uh, our personal relationships, but any sort of business relationship. So it's been this past year a time of make up or break up uh, and also any sort of legalities. And this is this, this really, and as I say every week, this is dependent on where this energy is in your natal chart. And so, um, for example, you might not be a Libra sun, but you might have your moon in Libra. And so for the past year, Jupiter has been affecting your moon, which is your emotions, um, excessive emotions, even relationship with mother, because moon is mother in astrology and so on. So uh, Jupiter has just moved into Scorpio. And so if you're a Scorpio, this is good news because you've got the planet of luck and good fortune uh, forming a conjunction or an influence on your sun. Whereas you might have another planet in Scorpio, so Jupiter will be affecting that and so on. So the influence of Jupiter in Scorpio, just an overall, is all about um, turning up things that have been hidden, um, or really it's about truth, because Jupiter, Jupiter is not just a planet of luck and good fortune, but it's a planet uh, also known for learning and intellectual pursuits and even spirituality. But really, if you think about broadening horizons or expansion of the soul, when Jupiter is involved. Now, when you put that together with Scorpio, uh, it's all about the truth or shining the light in dark corners where maybe we have feared to tread. And this is not like Pluto, because as I'm saying it, it sounded a bit like Pluto. Pluto forces change or it forces things to come to the surface. Um, this is more like, uh, more of a gently, gently approach. Uh, but we are coming up to Mercury moving into Scorpio and also the Sun in Scorpio. So we do have a lot of Scorpio energy coming up in the month of Scorpio uh, as we approach the end of October uh, and into November. Um, so with back to Jupiter, it's like Jupiter doesn't just want you to enjoy the spoils of your good luck. It wants you to look for the deeper meaning to things and to graduate to a higher level of understanding within the universe. And when you couple that with Scorpio, which is all about digging beneath the surface, and if you are fortunate enough to have a Scorpio in your life, you will know that Scorpios don't leave things alone. They keep poking and prodding until they find out. So when you put that together with Jupiter, which likes to understand things from a higher perspective, and as I just said, broadening horizons, um, then this coming year through next November will be a time of um, uncovering the truth um, or going back and finding out what has previously happened from a different point of view. Uh, also, Scorpio is one of the signs of money. 
so um, it's it's like this is a time where uh, if you could use your smarts, because Scorpio is a very uh, strategic sign, uh, and if you can be strategic about money, then you can expand money, because. Uh, Jupiter is all about expansion and on the flip side, excess. So uh, again, coupling these two energies together is, is quite interesting. A very interesting time the next year and it, as always, depending on where this will um, affect you. So uh, the thing is, so with Jupiter, it's about, uh, it's not about being restrained, but it's about not getting carried away. Because uh, Jupiter, it, I think of it like a balloon. It's like you can keep blowing it up and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It will burst eventually. Uh, so it's sort of like it's okay to expand, but just know the limitations or the restraints. Um, and the other thing, it's like Jupiter. Jupiter is, uh, it does rule excessive behavior. Uh, Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. Um, Sagittarius sometimes doesn't know when to stop. Uh, Sagittarius is the partier of the zodiac. It's sort of like uh, you pay now or pay later. Uh, you can have a great time uh, until the credit card bill comes due. But with Jupiter in Scorpio, there's a bit of restraint on there, um, except, of course, uh, Scorpio being a very emotional sign, it's more like uh, retail therapy. If something doesn't go okay, don't sort of resort to retail therapy to make you feel better, that type of thing. Uh, and as I said, that Jupiter is, um, a Scorp excuse me, Scorpio is one of the signs of money. Now, Jupiter, just on a side note, uh, rules the signs of Sagittarius and is the sub-ruler of Pisces. So what that means is uh, the ruler of Pisces is Neptune, but the sub-ruler is Jupiter. And the reason that we have sub-rulers is because in ancient times, we only knew uh, the planets out through Saturn. Uh, so Uranus, Neptune and Pluto didn't exist. Well, we can't say didn't exist, but we didn't have the technology or the tools to see those planets. Anyway, we're going to take a short break. So stay tuned and I will continue with Jupiter. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience in all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you the, are the inspired, inspired and, and the inspiration. inspiration. Hi, this is John Androsik of Five for Fighting, here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. You know, style is a personal thing, and your lifestyle is your business. But if you take it on the road, it becomes everybody's business. So please, plan ahead, designate before you celebrate. Friends, don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Hi there, welcome back to The Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox. Before the break, I was talking about Jupiter moving into Scorpio. 
So this is big news. Uh, if you're a water sign, lucky you, and the water signs are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, you will have a touch of luck this coming year. Uh, life should flow easily. But again, everything is dependent on the other planets in your natal chart. You can't just take one thing by itself. You have to uh, take the gestalt of all the planets in all the signs at the time you're born. So, uh, and I'm just referring to a sun sign. So Jupiter is now in Scorpio and it will be um, influencing your sun sign harmoniously if you are a water sign. But you might have planets in water signs. For example, you might have Venus in Pisces. So that would be a great time for romance this year. Uh, you might have Mars in Cancer, which means that this would be a wonderful time for any sort of uh, competition, uh, winning a competition or getting a promotion at work and so on. So just a little bit of background about Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. Um, and it's actually bigger than all the other planets, moons, asteroids, and comets combined. Uh, and a day on Jupiter lasts less than 10 hours. Uh, so that's pretty amazing uh, considering how big it is and how fast it spins. Uh, Jupiter has 16 moons, uh, which were first seen by Galileo with his new telescope in early 1610. Uh, and Jupiter is the brightest planet on average, although Venus rivals it for brightness. Uh, and then from our perspective here on Earth, Jupiter appears to go retrograde about 30% of the year uh, or about three and a half months. Uh, all the planets uh, typically go retrograde or turn retrograde. And from our perspective here on Earth, it looks like the planets are moving backwards, but we know that they really do not. They just appear to be traveling backwards in their orbit around the sun. Uh, and then Jupiter retrograde, it won't be happening. Let me just again take a quick look here. When does it happen? I believe, no, don't quote me on this, so I shouldn't say it, but I believe it's January. Anyway, I'll leave that for a January show, but we don't have to worry about Jupiter retrograde any time soon because it just moved into Scorpio. Uh, and so what else? Oh, yeah, so I, I said before, Jupiter takes 12 years to orbit the sun, uh, so it returns to its natal position uh, or the natal position in your natal chart every 12 years. Uh, and when anyone's having a Jupiter return, which is like when someone's 12, 24, 36, 48, and so on, it is considered a lucky period. Uh, and I say that generally, but... Speaking from personal experience, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> uh, anyway, so it's, it's like uh, great opportunities happen, but again, if there are other influences going on or Jupiter is not only forming a conjunction to natal Jupiter and then it's forming, I don't know, a, a square to or an opposition to Pluto, well, that's a different story. That's, that flavors it. So with astrology, you just can't pick one thing out alone everything is connected um, and so just just a little bit about Scorpio because Jupiter uh, just moved into Scorpio so Scorpio is symboled by the scorpion and so of course Scorpio I have to say is a sign and I will save this for next week's show when I'm dedicating it to all you Scorpios out there but uh, Scorpio does have a bit of a reputation uh, People, I, I think it's because people don't understand Scorpio. Uh, Scorpio is a very loyal sign. Uh, and if that loyalty is broken in some way, then that poisonous scorpion tail can lash out and sting its victim when they least expect it. Uh, and never push a Scorpio into a corner. So uh, Scorpio is a really com complex, passionate sign that acts in passion and emotion rather than thinking things through properly first. So when you couple that with Jupiter, and I said can be the planet of excess, well, there you have it. The fixed signs need to take care. The other fixed signs when Jupiter is in Scorpio, uh, and I'm using negative keywords for this, so uh, that's Taurus, Leo, and Aquarius. 
So with Jupiter in Scorpio, just take care. Uh, other people lashing out through passion rather than logic, not thinking things through first. And, and here's a good word of advice. Uh, don't provoke, especially another Scorpio or someone with an intense planet in Scorpio. Scorpio is a fixed water sign uh, that's ruled by both Mars and Pluto. Again, I'll cover all this next week. Tune into next week's show and I'll really get in depth about Scorpio. But for tonight, I'm just giving you an overview uh, because Jupiter has just moved into Scorpio where it will be until November 2018. So Jupiter is the planet of uh, expansion, luck, generosity. Um, it's the giving planet because whatever it touches, it makes bigger. Yes, and that does include your waistline. Uh, so even though I said it's pretty fortunate for the water signs, Jupiter and Scorpio, uh, just be really careful, particularly Scorpio, about not indulging excessively. Uh, it's a great time for indulging excessively in diet and exercise perhaps, but not a second helping of the chocolate cake. So uh, Jupiter, as I said, has been happily romping through uh, Libra this past year. Uh, and now it's about to get really intense because it's just moved into Scorpio. Uh, now, Jupiter is one of the lucky or kindly planets, the other one being Venus. Uh, and so whatever it touches, it typically makes things easier. Uh, so Jupiter wants to have it all, know it all, be it all, and do it all, uh, especially when it's in Scorpio. And um, it will take on the positive and negative expression of Scorpio. Now, uh, Jupiter in Scorpio, it's all about like deep with desire and not giving up until you have the answer. Uh, I'm thinking intense, mysterious, magnetic, ambitious, uh, doing whatever it takes to get what it wants, um, Desire is shaped, focused, sharp. Jupiter in Scorpio expands deeply and widely. Um, and just think, here's an analogy. So it's like if Scorpio is like thunder, then Jupiter in Scorpio is a hurricane. Um, and it won't just probe, it will penetrate through. It doesn't just desire, it will lust obsessively. Whoa. That's pretty intense. And, of course, Scorpio's ruling planet is uh, Pluto. So you've got these touches of Pluto. And Pluto, of course, as we know in mythology, Pluto uh, is lord of the underworld. So Jupiter and Scorpio have has these touches of, um, as I just said, intense burning desire, obsession, uh, and anything that Jupiter touches, it magnifies. So what can we expect from Jupiter in Scorpio? Um, scandal is the first thing that comes to mind. And, oh, look what's been going on in Hollywood. Uh, scandal. As soon as Jupiter moved into Scorpio, it hit. Uh, Jupiter is like the Santa Claus of the Zodiac. As I said, it's the biggest planet in our solar system. And so think big, like a big, as I said, excessive. So we are looking now at a scandal in the papers, and I say the papers, I mean online, of course, wherever in the news, and I'm thinking the biggest honcho in Hollywood, uh, there's a scandal going on. And Scorpio is a sign of sex. Uh, anything that's hidden will be revealed. So this is what's happening, a uh, scandal and a scandal. Um, and it's like scandals that started before Jupiter into Scorpio will be revealed because the truth is revealed with Jupiter in Scorpio. Um, Jupiter is the uh, ruler of Sagittarius, which is one of the signs of legality. Uh, you know, just, again, there's always a flip side to everything or a shadow side. Uh, be careful with um, like con artists uh, taking advantage of the goodwill and weaknesses of others. Um, also, watch out in the news, political or religious or investment scandals as well. Um, so things are coming to light. Discover what is hidden. Um, 
So the desire to know will fuel an increase in investigative journalism and advances in science, uh, medicine, uh, and Jupiter does bring luck in trying to discover what is hidden. There will be more respect for investigative journalism at this time. Um, Jupiter brings the luck and Scorpio reveals what is not known. So put those two together. Uh, so new advances or discoveries may lead to finding the cause or cure of illnesses we currently dread. So this is going to be really fascinating as well. Uh, Jupiter in Scorpio also wants to be the one at the helm. Uh, Scorpio is one of the power signs of the zodiac. It's the sixth sign. Um, and it always sees what others miss. And it will take advantage of what others overlook. And that's definitely Jupiter in Scorpio. Uh, it's about wealth. I said Scorpio is one of the financial or money signs. Um, it's, it's sort of like pe workers or people will want to group together because maybe they're sort of done with the power uh, power struggles or power being thrown around uh, at this time as well with Jupiter in Scorpio. Um, maybe increased competition, uh, Jupiter in Scorpio, and uh, maybe stricter regulations or... Um, Maybe there's going to be uh, a light on what isn't working. Also, I mentioned uh, religious or political uh, scandals are coming about. Um, Jupiter in Scorpio is a time of self-discovery because, like, if you can look deep within, uh, you will see things you might not, might not have seen before, not only with others but perhaps within yourself. Um, also, Jupiter in Scorpio is the time, uh, some of us will be more mystic, esoteric, occult. Um, it could just be a fad for this year or it might leave a permanent mark. Um, as I keep emphasizing, Jupiter in Scorpio wants to find what is hidden. Uh, and so things might be scary, mysterious at this time because it's something that might have been repressed or things that we've been repressing. Now is the time to deal with them. Um, people might might crave more intimacy because of Scorpio. And it's not just physical intimacy, it's also emotional. Deeply intense emotion uh, at this time. Because as I said, Jupiter is all about excess and being excessive. So how will Jupiter in Scorpio be affecting you and your sign? Well, if you're an Aries, for you, this is all about money, taxes, inheritance, and insurance. Uh, if you're a Taurus, the focus for you for the next two months will be on your partnerships, your personal, your business partnerships, any sort of agreements. We're going to take a short break, and I will continue with how Jupiter in Scorpio will be affecting your sign, so stay tuned. Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Ohm Times Radio. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi there, welcome back to The Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox, talking about the planets now, this month, 
this week, today. And just before the break, I was talking about Jupiter in Scorpio, which is really big news. And I was giving a rundown on how Jupiter in Scorpio would be affecting or will be affecting your sign for the next 12 months. And so if you're a Gemini, uh, the focus for you is on health, diet and fitness. This is a great time to get a medical, a thorough medical checkup. If you're a Cancer, lucky you, uh, it's all about romance and courtship and entertainment and amusements and pleasure and creativity and children. If you're a Leo, your focus will be on home, family, parents and ancestors. Uh, and if you're a Virgo, this is about uh, the intellect or uh, really using your mind this year, which will make you happy because your ruling planet is Mercury and that's the planet of the mind. Also, it's good to connect with siblings and neighbours. If you're a Libra, uh, this is about money, uh, and uh, on the surface it sounds like it's a great thing. Oh, great! Jupiter is going to be affecting my uh, money, the money in my life. But just be careful. Money might be easy come, easy go. I've seen many charts in readings where. Um, Many charts in readings where Jupiter is affecting the second house and really what in actual fact is um, it's like excessive spending or the money's there but you're just spending it as fast as, as it's coming in. And so, uh, and if you're a Scorpio, it's all about the self and appearance. Be careful that you don't have an expanding waistline. Sagittarius, pay attention to your to your dreams. Increased intuition. Uh, looking for the deeper meaning of life. Capricorn, uh, friends, acquaintances and groups. Aquarius, career and status and achievements. And Pisces, uh, legalities, anything to do with overseas or publishing. Next up, we have Venus moving into Libra. Uh, this is good news because Venus really likes Libra. It's its favorite sign along with Taurus. Uh, and that's happening, or that has happened on Saturday the 14th, where it will be until November 7th. So this is good for the air signs or anyone with air planets. And the air signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Now, Venus is all about love and sweetness and affection and romance, pleasure, bringing people together, socializing, everything harmonious, um, friendships, dating, partnerships, social gatherings. It's also money, finances, um, how you spend money, how you don't spend money, and so on. Uh, and where Venus is in your chart, in your natal chart, it influences how you approach any kind of partnership uh, and also how you like to spend money or not, as I just said. Uh, and, of course, Venus is the goddess of love. It's the second closest planet to the sun. Uh, it's uh, never more than, like, um, about 48 degrees away from the sun, which means if you're uh, a Libra sun or your sun is in Libra, Venus is only ever going to be uh, no more than two signs away from your sun sign because it's so close to the sun. And, of course, Libra is a sign of relationships and harmony and balance. Equilibrium. It's a very sweet sign, um, very, very much... Uh, harmony, doesn't like confrontation. So when you put those two energies together, it's a really, it will be a really nice influence. And so under the influence of Venus in Libra, your social life could be in full swing. And so we might find that many of us, even you, Aries, gracious manners come naturally and for many of us, our charms could be 
irresistible. Now, just take note. Anybody that's an air sign or has planets in air signs, even fire signs, this is good news for you. Uh, many of us might attract friends and lovers and might, we might be very popular. So any sort of social activity um, is a great use of this uh, energy. Uh, our social calendars might be booked solidly. And if you're single and you're looking for a partnership, this is wonderful news for you, especially if you're an air sign, Gemini, Libra or Aquarius, where that's critical uh, because uh, recently... You know, Venus has been in Virgo, which is all about finding perfection in relationships, and perfection, as we all know, does not exist. Now, it's a little bit more um, easygoing. Uh, we don't want to upset. We're not criticizing. Uh, we might be going out of our way to avoid conflicts or confrontations. Uh, we want to smooth over differences of opinion just to keep the peace. Um, that might even mean sacrificing our own needs or desires, but keeping the peace, and no confrontations is really important. Uh, being a negotiator or a diplomat at this time. Um, collaborative projects, we work really well with others during this time instead of solo. It's really important to spend time with other people because it really goes quite well. Uh, what will be important, justice and fairness, uh, will be very important to a lot of us. Uh, on Tuesday, October 17th, Mercury, communication planet Mercury, moves into Scorpio until November 5th. Now, again, this sort of goes along with what I was saying about Jupiter in Scorpio. Um, it's all about seeking the deeper meaning and core truth. Uh, we'll have intense focus. Uh, we will be digging beneath the surface to get to the bottom line. Uh, clearing away just meaningless data and uncovering the essence of what's really important. Now, again, if you're a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio or Pisces, uh, this is great. This is really great for you. If you need to research or investigate or uncover something, this is really wonderful. Um, an intellectual intensity can turn into an obsession just on the flip side, so take care with that. Uh, and... Some of us might be really suspicious, out of the ordinary, uh, with Mercury in Scorpio, even cynical. Uh, a lot of us won't be taking people's words or ideas at face value. Uh, what else about Mercury in Scorpio? And um, just be careful of misunderstandings because of that paranoia or suspicion. Uh, mysteries and thrillers um, will be fascinating to a lot of us. Uh, and a lot of us will be also understanding other people's inner workings and motivations. Uh, this is a great use or a great influence for psychology. Okay, moving right along. On Thursday the 19th, uh, we have a new moon in Libra. New moons are really great for new beginnings, starting new things. And of course, as we know, Libra is the sign of relationships and harmony. So if you're looking uh, to maybe start a business relationship, sign a contract, uh, even go on a date, a new date with somebody, a new date, wait, a date with someone new, <laughs> a date with someone new, uh, the new moon in Libra is good for that. But like with any new moon, you have to end something before you can start something new. Uh, it's also good for groups, as I just said. Uh, new Moon in Libra is great for joining a group. Uh, joining a group of like-minded people. Uh, cooperation is vital. Uh, we're all looking for harmony. <clears throat> uh, compromise is another key word for New Moon in Libra. Compromise actually is a really great word for New Moon in Libra. Um, because it's the heart of a peaceful coexistence. Now, that's music to a Libran's ears. Um, and it's also like everybody's in a win-win situation with New Moon in Libra. And if they're not, then these other Scorpio influences, Jupiter in Scorpio, Mercury in Scorpio, the sun moving into Scorpio next week, will dig that up and shine the light. So if you are signed some sort of deal or you're in some sort of arrangement with somebody else, and you're not, it's not really a fair deal, 
um, something might shift around that, especially if you don't know that it's an unfair arrangement. Um, you know, you might have signed a contract and uh, not quite aware of the other person getting a whole lot more than you. Um, this will come to light around this time. So just know that um, it's a good time for balance and harmony. Uh, and it's just not about confrontation. It's about like what's fair and respect and trust. Uh, so that's the influence of the uh, new moon in Libra. So it's like addressing balance, balance issues um, if you're involved in an unequal association. So I guess that's one way of putting it. Uh, also beauty, that's the other thing. With Libra, new moon in Libra is all about beautifying and beauty and not just like getting your hair done or buying new makeup but just your environment as well and that's affecting all of us with this new moon it's like if you're looking to beautify something <clears throat> excuse me beautify something or a wardrobe update or making something look better uh, um, aesthetically then this is definitely the time to be doing it oh also with that uh, Scorpio influence going on it's a time for recycling so it's like a time to clear out the closet, update the wardrobe and donate to charity, recycle uh, recycle anything, furniture, clothing, because uh, Scorpio is into recycling, regeneration, that type of thing. So there's a lot of interesting energy going on at this time with Jupiter, Jupiter uh, Sun coming up, Mercury in Scorpio. Um, we're just about to have, I'm just looking through, Venus, Venus moving into Libra. So it's all about like recycling and beautifying. I'd say they're the key words for right now. On that note, we're going to take a short break. After the break, I will continue with the other planetary influences. So stay tuned. your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you Tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive, and now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Art Council. Hi there, welcome back to the Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer Kelly Fox, talking about the planets at this time. Uh, and of course the headline is Jupiter in Scorpio, Venus in Libra, Mercury in Scorpio. Next week I'm ded dedicating the show to all you Scorpios out there, talking in depth about Scorpio. Uh, but now I'm going to give you the other planetary influences at this time. Oh, and of course, the new moon on Thursday, which I was just talking about before, excuse me, before the break. New moon in Libra, all about relationships. So I'm going to start with, we recently had Mars 
Warrior Mars forming a square to Saturn. Uh, no, and this is not good news, but the good news is that it is behind us, thankfully. Uh, so when you have inner planets, their influences are, are short term. Uh, the further out the planet, the longer the influence, uh, positive or negative. So uh, we recently had Mars forming a square to Saturn. So that was Mars in Libra, uh, excuse me, Mars in Virgo forming a Square to Saturn in Sagittarius. Not so great the past, say, week for the mutable signs, uh, and that's Gemini, Virgo, Sag, and Pisces. But the good news is that this influence is behind us. It's a very frustrating period um, where we're blocked or inhibited in some way. Something's getting in the way. Uh, maybe our energy is a bit uh, sapped and our vitality is not quite there. Um, but a lot of obstruction. Anytime I see Mars and Saturn together in a difficult aspect, I think of like driving with the brakes on. Or we need to get somewhere and there's um, slow down signs or driving really slow. Uh, this is just an analogy, of course. It's like, and the frustration and the anger would be welling up inside, and yet we're unable to do anything because Saturn represents authority or rules and restrictions. Um, even structure. So it's like Mars is the action planet and Saturn is the planet of just uh, structure, rules, regulations, that type of thing. So the good news is that's behind us, but it's something that I needed to address and it's been sort of hanging around. Uh, also, though, the good news, though, is uh, recently we've had Mercury sextile Saturn. So this is really great for mental discipline and any sort of attention to detail. Uh, so it's like uh, we've got powerful mental, mental processes. So any, if, if we've been feeling blocked or inhibited, um, we've got solutions so we can intellectually, uh, logically come up with a plan to work around the limitations that many of us have been dealing with lately. Uh, and then on Sunday, uh, we had Mercury in Libra opposing Uranus in Aries. Now, this is a really interesting uh, influence because, con yes, concentration is difficult. Mercury is planet of the mind. Uranus is uh, the planet of the unexpected or the unpredictable. But it's also a higher octave of Mercury. So it's sort of like they relate to each other in some way because they're similar. Uh, it's all about the intellect, the mind. Um, but Uranus is more channeling, whereas Mercury is more, let's just say Mercury is more conscious and Uranus is more subconscious, not subconscious, but more unconscious and channeling. Uh, so when they're opposing each other, it's sort of like these energies should be flowing, but they're opposing. So they're opposite. So Mercury opposite Uranus uh, this week. Um, so communications might be a bit challenging. Uh, some of us might even have foot in mouth because, you know, Uranus is in Aries. Uh, maybe contradicting what other people say or disagreeing with just to provoke. Uh, some of us might not, not let anything slide, and I'm talking mainly at the cardinal signs, uh, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. This is a time about blurting things out without really thinking about the aftermath. Um, it's sort of like our normal mental filters are taking a break at this time, especially for those signs. Um, maybe it's shock value, you know, saying something to shock other people. Um, it's not a good time to sort of play the devil's advocate now. It's not good to sort of interrupt just to make a point or just to provoke. Uh, mental strain or fatigue is sort of common under this high-strung, impatient energy. Okay, and then today, uh, Sun sextile Saturn, that's great news. Uh, it's really good for focus and discipline and self-discipline and being patient, uh, being organized and competent and, uh, as I said, concentration and focus, sorting out our priorities, um, vitality and energy are typically good with this energy, um, being really practical, buckling down, um, focusing on long-term projects, um, we can work well by ourselves or within a group with that Libra and energy going on as well. Uh, people are sensible and practical. Uh, and as I said, it's really great for setting long-term plans. On Wednesday, we have Mercury conjunct Jupiter. Now, this is an excellent period uh, mentally, intellectually, 
our minds are stimulated and we're ready. We're, it's a great time for learning. Um, if you're looking to sign up for a course or a class, a lot of us are craving new knowledge. Uh, and especially because both these planets are in Scorpio, it's about digging deep, um, broader concepts, um, stretching our minds, uh, mentally stretching our minds is a really good use of uh, Mercury conjunct Jupiter. I really like this energy, uh, especially when it's in Scorpio. Uh, any sort of researching is a really great um, use of this energy. Uh, on the flip side, though, be careful not to exaggerate or talk too much or in a loud voice. Um, but really, that's, that's not such a huge deal compared to some other transits you could be having. And as I said, the new moon is on Thursday, but also on Thursday we have the sun opposite Uranus. Uh, so it's a bit jittery, high-strung, nervous quality. Um, people are being weird and strange usually with this, with this influence. It's never us, it's always someone else. Uh, be careful of confrontations or standoffs or ruffling people's feathers. People don't want to be told what to do. Uh, sun opposite Uranus. Uh, be careful of giving direct instructions. Uh, uh, be, be prepared for like a rebellious reaction. Um, yeah, so to just watch things coming at us that we weren't expecting. People are impatient. Accidents can happen because people are rushing around, uh, not following the rules. Uh, people just being impulsive generally with the sun opposite Uranus. Now for your weekly horoscope, and I'm going to whiz through these really quickly because I had a lot to say uh, on the show. And uh, what what you can do, though, to get your daily, weekly, and monthly horoscope, go to the Om Times website uh, where you can get the information. So what I'm going to do right now is give you an overview of what your sign can expect this week with this week's planetary influences. So if you're an Aries, uh, it's all about business for you um, and being shrewd in your dealings with other people. If you're a Taurus, uh, make a point of listening to your significant other this week uh, and listening properly. If you're a Gemini, uh, reach out to other people and focus on teamwork. If you're a Cancer, um, if you can't get people to cooperate with you, uh, especially family members, try changing the way you're asking. If you're a Leo, you're full of great ideas on how to reorganize things, and your sign is the organizer. If you're a Virgo, you have many of the answers. Um, so maybe you should be sharing your knowledge freely with others. And if you're a Libra, the new moon in your sign is the ideal time to launch a new project or business idea. If you're a Scorpio, uh, and if you have something to say, uh, just say it. Uh, especially because the Mercury-Jupiter uh, conjunction in your sign, I don't think you could actually really be holding back. If you are a Sagittarius, um, your psychic abilities are very strong now and you may find yourself picking up all kinds of information about other people. Uh, this increased sensitivity can be helpful both in your personal life and in your business life. Uh, you have insight at this time so use it. If you are a Capricorn, you have a lot of advice to give other people, but don't be offended if they don't take it. Uh, try to run someone else's life. Won't work. Uh, support and guide if you can and be there to pick up the pieces, but don't insist or take over. Uh, sometimes Capricorn, you can be a little bit bossy, of course, in a nice way. Uh, your sign is known as the CEO of the Zodiac, after all. Uh, if you're an Aquarian, uh, a very busy work week puts you under pressure, but you'll rise to the challenge. Uh, if you can think of a new or better way of working, don't hesitate to suggest it or give it a try. Innovation is in the cards and will be rewarded. And I did just mention the sun opposing Uranus. Uh, Uranus is your ruling planet. So uh, there's no fear with Aquarius wanting to try something uh, out of the box. So uh, this, is, this is the time to do it, but not do it in a radical way or provoking way, as some might say that you can do, Aquarius. And finally, Pisces, 
we Pisces, um, you do sometimes love a good debate and you could spend hours, days, weeks, months, years, decades putting the world to rights. Um, but be sensitive to controversial topics and the fact that you could offend someone by pressing home your view. Um, Pisces, you need to listen as well as speaking. Um, Pisces really does like to not just have a good debate, but really likes to chatter. Pisces is a chatterbox, and that is because Pisces is channeling. Pisces channels from a higher source. So it's like there is some method to the madness here. There is something to be said. If you can read between the lines, um, you'll really get more information than what Pisces is even verbally giving you. Pisces is a very, very psychic sign, uh, the most psychic sign of the zodiac. And so um, it's very sensitive. And so if you have a Pisces in your life, be very tender and careful with your Pisces. That's it from me. Thanks for tuning in. And be sure to tune in to next week's show. This is Kelly Fox, and this is The Astrology Show, wishing you a great week ahead.